The anointing of the Spirit comes with knowledge. There is a knowledge that is attached to the Spirit and that is the knowledge of the Spirit realm. There's a knowledge of God. The knowledge of Jesus Christ. There's a knowledge of how the Spirit world operates. That means you must be dependent on your lecturer, the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you for stopping by to watch this YouTube sermon. I believe your life will be deeply impacted by the truths that are in this message. Remember, the Word of God is like seed which God gives to us. Seed from heaven which brings God's life, power and wisdom. And as you receive these truths into your heart, it has the power to transform your life completely. Can you also do a favor for us? Can you please like this video and send the link to a friend whom you know will be blessed through this? And if you are not a subscriber yet, would you please subscribe to this channel so that we can reach more people? God bless you as you watch this message. If you are to experience any measure of true Christian life, which is the life of God, we are utterly dependent on the Holy Spirit. And when I say we are utterly dependent on the Holy Spirit, it includes the power of God and the grace of Jesus. But they all come through the ministration of the Holy Spirit. A failure to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit will lead to a handicap in your life. What is a handicap? A handicap is a restriction, a limitation. Now Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says that God created us in His image. God is a spirit being. We are created in the image of a spirit being. Do you know that in every other creature in creation, whether it is animals or birds, they are all original. They were not created in the image of anything or anybody. But human beings, we are not originals because we are created after the image of God. I'm not saying we are gods, but I'm saying that we are created in the image of God. God is a spirit being. And that's why Jesus in John chapter 4 verse 24 gives us this revelation upon which we must build our spiritual life. Jesus said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth because he is spirit. So when we take that word worship, which can imply obedience, which can mean following God every day of our lives, not just worshiping him for 30 minutes, on a Sunday service but everything we do in life to the glory of God is called worship all forms of worship in Christianity must come from the heart in spirit and in truth that means there may be many Christians around the world today who may be worshiping God but it is not genuine worship because it is not done from the heart and it is not done in truth so understand this God is spirit God created man as a spirit being and God created us to worship him in spirit and in truth. So, when God created man in his image, Adam and Eve, God created them to function dependent on his directions, dependent on his power. In other words, God created man to be dependent on a spirit being. However, man failed because he yielded to the wrong spirit not the right spirit the right spirit is god the creator of all spirit beings too but man yielded to satan and because man yielded to satan sin came into the world and now in romans chapter 5 verse 12 the bible says death spread to all men because of one man all men are born in sin because of adam's sin death spread to all men the moment Adam and Eve sinned, the hearts of men became increasingly wicked. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, we can see in the scriptures that the Lord saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Man was not created wicked. There was no sin in his heart or in his being. But when he sinned, the presence of God left his life. He died spiritually and he took on a sin nature. And because of that, his heart became increasingly wicked. Death spread to all men. And that is what I mean by a handicap. Limited in life. Restricted in life. That means men, unless the sin issue is dealt with, 
can never be what he was created to be can never fulfill God's plan and purpose in his life and can never enter into his final destiny to be in eternity with God in heaven because of this handicap the heart of man becoming increasingly wicked has brought severe destruction on the earth all of that is a sign of the handicap of man and because man died spiritually God is spirit God created man as a spirit being but because man took on a sin nature now man instead of living by receiving wisdom from the spirit realm from God man is now dependent only on his intellect and on his senses that means he is dependent on his own abilities Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and 2 men by all his abilities all his intellect by all his hard work and all his striving men can never come to the true knowledge of God men by all the religion they created by all the good works they do and by all their philosophy and learning can never come to the true knowledge of God that is a huge revelation you will see in the entire New Testament now let me present this to you from another story go to John chapter 3 there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a ruler of the Jews a Pharisee means that he was a student of the law a teacher of the law in other words he was a theologian now this man came to Jesus by night and said to him rabbi we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him verse 3 Jesus answered and said to him most assuredly I say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of God Nicodemus said to him how can a man be born when he is old can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born Jesus answered most assuredly I say to you unless one is born of water and the spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not marvel that I say to you you must be born again the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now the question Nicodemus asked Jesus is proof, is a sign that this student of God does not know God. That this supposed teacher of God's Word has no idea at all about the spiritual realm, about the Kingdom of God. Now all he has is this. I see this man, I've heard testimonies about him, He's doing miracles. Surely there must be something powerful, wonderful about him from God. But beyond that, Nicodemus knows nothing about the realm of God. Now that is a testament to the rulers of today on the earth, whether in the church or in the world. That despite all our intellect, despite all our knowledge, we can be completely ignorant of the realm of God, of the spiritual world. So Jesus had to give him an understanding, a revelation, which is still valid today. And that is, unless you and I are born again, we cannot enter, we cannot see, we cannot comprehend, we cannot understand, we cannot experience the kingdom of God. Nicodemus still did not understand. Jesus was talking spirit stuff. Nicodemus was trying to understand from his senses. Do I have to go back to my mother's womb? That was also how I thought when I heard the term born again so many years ago. Do you have to be going back to my mother's womb again? We are trying to understand spiritual things with natural reasoning. God is speaking to us spiritual realities with spiritual understanding. So Jesus has to explain to him and say, what is born of the flesh is flesh. But what is born of the Spirit will be by the Holy Spirit within you and every human being has to be born in the Spirit. Now, how did that happen? When you heard Jesus, the gospel, that He died for you, something moved on your heart, yes or no? And you gave your life to Jesus, yes or no? That moment you gave your life to Jesus, all of these things happened at the same time. You're forgiven of your sins, you received eternal life, the Holy Spirit came in you, you became a new creation, you were ushered from darkness into light, 
and you turn from a sinner to the righteousness of God, from a sinner to a child of God, it happened instantly at that moment. Can you say hallelujah? That is what we mean by being born in the Spirit. Now Jesus is saying, once you are born in the Spirit, then you will see, know, understand the kingdom of God. Because what is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. And then he says this, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from. We cannot see the wind. But when it blows on you, you know that the wind has blown. Yes or no? We are able to perceive. We are able to understand that the wind is blowing because we can feel it upon us. In the same way Jesus is saying this, those who are born of the Spirit now have the capacity and the ability to understand the realm of the Spirit. You'll be able to know and understand how the kingdom of God operates only if you are born again in the Spirit. And that is a work of the Holy Spirit. So when you are born again, you are born again with the capacity, the potential, the ability now to understand the realm of God. It's already in you. Now, your mind may not have comprehended everything, but in your spirit, you have the ability. You know, Moses prayed this, Lord, show me your ways. Not only your acts, show me your ways that I may understand you and that I may know you. Now, that is what we must be hungry for. Not just, Lord, give me a miracle, but Lord, show me your ways. Show me your ways, Lord God, that I may interact with your principles and my life may be transformed, my marriage may be transformed, my business may be transformed, my mind may be transformed, and I will begin to walk on the highways of God and live the ways of desperation. In John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus says this, This is eternal life, that they may know you, that you may know God, the only true God and Jesus Christ. See, when the Holy Spirit comes into you and you have life in you, eternal life is not length of time. Eternal life is a tangible life of God in you. That life comes with a knowledge. It's not earthly knowledge. There is a life that is coming to you and that life has come with the knowledge by which you, now you are able to interact with God with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, and if it is God's will, even with angels. Now you must understand how to operate this knowledge because everyone who is born again has this knowledge. It's in you. Let me tell you something about operating systems. This computer has many apps. My ability to use all these apps and interact with my thoughts and my finger in these apps is because there is something in this computer called the iOS operating system. That's the main part of this computer. You may have all the expensive hardware here, the best screen and the best of batteries, but if there's no operating software, it is useless. Absolutely useless. What makes this hardware expensive is actually the operating system. And what makes all the apps in this computer usable is because of the operating system. If I had the old generation software, if I try to run these apps on MS-DOS, it cannot run because the operating system is obsolete. It is insufficient to run all these apps. What is an operating system? An operating system is the most important software that runs on a computer. It manages the computer's memory and processes, as well as all its software and hardware. It also allows you to communicate with the computer without knowing how to speak the computer's language. Without an operating system, a computer is useless. In the same way, human beings also have operating system. And without an operating system, you are just a hunk of flesh. That's it. Sometimes some people may be very beautiful on the outside. Have you seen some of those beauty contests where they ask them questions? What is a hobby? My hobby is hobbies. <laughs> so beautiful on the outside, but the operating system is very old. <laughs> it's not been updated. When you hear someone speak 
beautiful on the outside, but when you hear the old operating system speak, all that beauty is gone. Yes or no? Yes. So the operating system is very important. Before you were born again, and all men on the earth, we are living dependent on the operating system of the mind, the intellect, and our senses. And we go to schools, and we go to colleges, and we read books, we go to universities to develop that operating system. And yes, that enables us to live sufficiently to a certain degree. But when we look at the challenges and the problems in our own lives, in the world today, it proves that the operating system in mankind is insufficient to deal with the problems and challenges of life. Despite all your education, and despite all your understanding, you will still be susceptible to the fear of the unknown. Even as a Christian, after we are born again, many of us are trying to live life, the new life of being born again with the all operating system. And we're trying to walk with God, please God, through our own works, our own efforts, our own thoughts, our own understanding. We try to pray in our own understanding. And that leads to more confusion, pain, and frustration. We must understand this, that after we're born again, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us so that the Holy Spirit will begin to operate a new system, a new system of the Spirit and truth, the Word of God and the Spirit of God in our lives with all the different applications called faith, one application, prayer, another application, giving, another application, walking in love, another application, missions, another application. Every aspect of the Christian life is like an app on your computer. And you're able to interface with that app and use that app because there is a main operating system inside you called the Holy Spirit. But many of us are functioning in the old operating system your own thoughts, your own understanding, what you see, what you think, what you feel. So you wake up in the morning and you feel lonely and you say, God, where are you? I think God has left me. You feel guilty. You feel shame. You feel condemned because you did something wrong. And instead of locking into the operating system of the Spirit, which reveals the truth to you that you are righteous, you go back to the old operating system of shame and guilt and condemnation. So the Holy Spirit has been sent to you to bring knowledge. Knowledge. This is eternal life that you may know God. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of Jesus is in you. And the Holy Spirit is in you to teach you. That means when you open up your Bible in the morning and you read, ask the Holy Spirit to help you, to teach you. He would reveal the Word to you. He would reveal the Father to you. Because He has come to dispense knowledge. The Holy Spirit is a lecturer. The anointing of the Spirit comes with knowledge. There is a knowledge that is attached to the Spirit and that is the knowledge of the Spirit realm. There's a knowledge of God. The knowledge of Jesus Christ. There's a knowledge of how the Spirit world operates. That means you must be dependent on your lecturer. The Holy Spirit. He will teach you what Jesus has said and taught the Holy Spirit's role is to teach us. I believe Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit and peace in the same breath, it means to us this, that even the awareness of peace, the peace that we experience during salvation, that after we pray, our hearts are flooded with peace, that is the work of the Holy Spirit. How many of you have had worries and fears and you went to God in prayer and as you prayed and prayed and prayed and as you cried, your heart was filled with peace that passes all understanding. Can I see your hands? That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Now that knowledge of peace, that experience of peace, it's not just an intellectual understanding. It's an experience of peace. People in the world cannot understand that. Because people in the world will say, how can you be smiling when you have no money in your bank account? How can you be so happy when you have so many problems? See, this is not an intellectual peace. It's not a peace men can understand. It's a peace that is from the Holy Spirit. Can you say Amen? That peace that you know, by know I mean experientially, that peace is giving to you this knowledge, this knowledge of God. 
Because that peace tells me God is with you. That peace is telling me, Sean, Jesus is saying, I'm with you. Never give up. The Father is telling me through that peace, I'm with you. I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. So do not worry. So even if God does not have to tell me in sentences, that peace is giving me a knowledge of God that is gracious, He's loving, He's kind, He's faithful, He's with me so that I can know the ways of God and have confidence and stability. Even though I cannot see with my eyes, I cannot hear with my ears, I cannot feel with my senses, yet I know because the Spirit within me is teaching me by peace. Not as the world gives. It's not peace that comes from sleeping. It's a supernatural peace. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. That is the lecture of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. He has come with the express responsibility of doing the Father's will, executing the Father's purpose, bringing the Father's agenda on the earth. The Holy Spirit has no agenda. The Holy Spirit's only intent and motive is to glorify the Father and to glorify Jesus. To point to what Jesus says. To point to the purpose of God the Father. The Holy Spirit is not sent to be your servant. Only to deliver you from demonic bondages and drug addictions and to help you to succeed in life for yourself alone. That's not the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He is sent to fulfill God's purpose for your life. In God's purpose for your life, there is blessings for you, but that is not the ultimate goal. That's why I want to warn you. When you begin to yield to the Holy Spirit and pray and seek Him, the Holy Spirit will also make your life very uncomfortable. Not painful, uncomfortable. Because He will ask you to do things at times you don't want to do. He will ask you to go to places you don't want to go to. He will ask you to go and speak to people to reconcile when you don't want to. He will ask you to forgive when you don't want to. He will ask you to give 20,000 when you give only 200 rupees. I'm telling you the truth. He will ask you to humble yourself when you want to lift yourself up. But everything the Holy Spirit tells you is this. The operating system of God that will enable you to live life to the optimum level that you are created for. Try this. Tell God, I don't want your Holy Spirit I want to live life by myself today. Let's see how far you go. Let's see how much you enjoy life. Let's see how dark your life becomes. On the other hand, don't be just sitting on the fence. I don't want the devil. I don't want to give too much to God. Just a little bit to go by in life and not experience hardship and not experience the pressures of faith either. Don't be satisfied with mediocrity. Go all the way to the end with the Holy Spirit. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit brings a new operating system. Once we learn to function in that system, there'll be no glitches. The more you yield to the Spirit, uh, let me tell you this, your heart will become lighter. If our hearts can be weighed in the scales of God, in the scales of the Spirit, how heavy would our heart be? Think. There could be someone here filled with problems in your life, filled with responsibilities, and yet your heart can be as light as a feather because you are trusting in God, you are walking without offense and hate, you are walking without worry because you are just depending on God, you have a prayer life, you are trusting, your heart is as light as a feather. So when you go to the office, your heart is as light as a feather. When you are dispensing your responsibilities, your heart is as light as a feather. But there are some of you here, you're only 14, 15, 17 years old, no responsibility in life. You don't even have to earn anything. Your parents are earning, but your heart is heavy. It's because of your own thoughts and what you're putting yourself. So your heart is so heavy that it's affecting your studies. It's affecting your health. How many of you believe that? Amen. Now, when you learn to operate in the ways of the Spirit, your heart will become lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And that lightness will enable you to have clearer thoughts, clearer speech, 
swifter understanding. You'll be able to walk into a situation and analyze God's will even before you pray. Because your heart is so light and filled with the Spirit of God. God wants you to operate in His Holy Spirit. By that, I don't mean exclusive without the Word. No. The Holy Spirit will always bring you to the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. So, the Holy Spirit, we are dependent on that. We must learn to yield to that. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. That means if you want to operate as a son of God, you must be led by the Spirit of God. You must yield to the operating system of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Look at the verse before that also. Verse 13. For as you live according to the flesh, you will die. If you live by laziness, your future will die. If you live by the flesh, if you live by your sins, there is a death coming. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So even the transformation of your life, where your habits live, and the power of the Spirit transforms you, is by the Spirit. Now this is important because almost all of you are seeking God for some direction in your life. You need wisdom from God for your career, for your future, for your studies. That's one of the main prayer requests. You don't know. But it's very easy to know if you will just yield to the operating system of the Spirit. But if you're trying to know from your intellect, it's hard, it's frustrating. You have to look to the Holy Spirit daily. In the morning, in the evening. Look to the Holy Spirit. How? In your moment of prayer. As you're communing with God, you're also listening to that presence of peace, the lack of peace, the direction of the Spirit within you. Because when you do that, you'll experience the witness of heaven and the witness on the earth. And the Holy Spirit is the common thread. The Spirit will witness in your heart what is God's will written in heaven, in God's book of your life. The importance of building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number one, acknowledge His presence in you daily. The Holy Spirit is the most neglected person in the universe. The Holy Spirit has been living in you since the day you got born again and you have not even said hello to Him. Acknowledge Him daily. Number two, commune with Him daily. Talk to Him daily. Build a relationship. Just start talking to Him. He's living in you. Number three, learn His language. The language of the Spirit, and I will teach this more in the days to come. His language is peace and joy and impressions and visions and pictures and symbols. The language of the Spirit. Anointing is His language. Number four, very important. Obey His instructions instantly. Obey. When the Spirit of God tells you something to do, obey instantly. That's how you build a relationship with Him obedience. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Did you know that the Bible says that blessed are those who not only hear the word, but actually do the word. There is more blessing in practicing the word than only hearing it. And I want to encourage you therefore to practice this word immediately. Would you also kindly comment in the comment section how you were blessed through this message? And if you have any prayer requests, feel free to text or call the numbers that are given and there are people here that are willing to pray for you for God's blessing upon your life. And again, please like, subscribe, and share this video, and you'll be doing your part in sharing this message to the world. God bless you.